Hey, model fans. Welcome back to Watson's Models. And this might be the last uh, video I do for the weekend. Um, tomorrow, I'm going to be working on my M37 out in the shop. So if you're interested in uh, a 1952 Dodge M37 three-quarter ton weapons carrier, yeah, then tune in to Watson's Wagons. Um, and I think on my cover page of this one here, I have a link to Watson's Wagons. Hey, love to, love for you to join me over there. But I'm working on the front axle, and I'm probably going to be, you know, getting the differential cleaned and getting some seals and bushings and things removed out of that front end. And uh, I'm just going to document the process. So if you're interested in that, check that out tomorrow. I do have a video posted on Watson's wagons already on removing the differential from that because there just aren't any videos out there so i produce them uh anyhow <clears throat> earlier i was talking about wanting to show you guys a couple of kits that were also an important part of my youth um, this would have been back in the 80s for these particular ones and uh you know i was heavily into 135th scale armor um with you know Tamiya kits and I lived in Pontiac Michigan at the time and I would go down to RC Hobbies which was right on M59 um, at the main intersection there uh, where I lived probably not even a mile from my house maybe a mile and a half tops walking distance so I was a I was a paper route having snow shoveling grass cutting fool for money back in those days. I was working uh, since I was able to push a mower and push a shovel. So, uh, you know, nothing uh, was given to me. Uh, we were, uh, you know, we were an average family growing up in Pontiac. Uh, parents, you know, my dad worked at General Motors uh, his entire career. And, um, you know, we, we did what we could do. So I had to finance my own hobby, which I happily did. So, yeah, I developed a work ethic very early on back in those days, and uh, there was always money to be made. You just had to be willing to do it. We even went as far as taking our bicycles. My brother and I had Schwinn bicycles, and uh, you know, like the dirt bikes? Uh, they were the scramblers. Yeah. I remember mine being blue with yellow trim and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I put my paper out bag on the front of the handlebars, and we'd ride around Pontiac and collect uh, soda cans. Because back in those days, they started uh, doing the 10 cent per can refund. And you wouldn't, you'd wouldn't you be surprised how many people throw their cans out on the street. So I financed my hobby collecting cans and turning them into felices at the supermarket there. And they would give me a receipt for the amount of cans I turned in. I pocketed my cash, went straight to the hobby shop. <laughs> I loved it there, man. And... Um, and the funny thing is, is that hobby shop is about as big as my basement is here. And I would, I would, it would be safe to say that I have more kits in my stash than that hobby shop did, that, than, than that hobby shop did on their shelves at the time. So, yeah, huge influence on me back then. Hard work in the individual. And I'll be working until I'm dead. So, hey, you know, that's why I do these videos. They're fun. Um. I still, I still work a full-time job like all of you, uh, but then I come home and I uh, turn on my, uh, you know, writer, producer, director, editor, um, all those other little things that you have to be in order to even make these videos. So, and as, uh, as I stated before, they're unscripted, so I do fly by the seat of my pants on this stuff, and whatever it turns out to be, it turns out to be. So... Hey, I'm not for everybody, but I am for some. <laughs> Especially all my brothers out there who, uh, you know, who's 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 uh, eating the same dirt that I've eaten and been through the same crap. So I appreciate you watching my channel, man. It's it's awesome. <clears throat> now, at the beginning of my videos, you'll notice an M1 Abrams tank on the. It's the very first clip, and it says D48. And then D65 on the uh, on that image. So one person picked up on that and asked me about it and wanted to know if that represented 48 Cav Third Armored Division. Yes, 
I was waiting to see how long it would take for somebody to notice that. That picture I took in Grafenvir on Tank Table 8, I'm pretty sure it was Tank Table 8, but we just got those M1A1 tanks. Uh, we haven't even put our, uh, you know, our markings on there yet or none of that kind of stuff. In fact, our unit was, you know, we won the, uh, uh, my unit is well known for winning the Canadian Army Trophy back in 1987, okay? Uh, we had Bill the Cat on our turrets, and we didn't put Bill on the tanks yet until after that particular rotation to the field. Uh, when we got back and, you know, the 3rd AD had their ceremony and General Griffin said, you know what, we're going to keep Bill on the tanks. Uh, then we had the authorization to put Bill the Cat on the new tanks, and I was able to help um, uh, Terry Follett put those uh, cats on there. And so uh, anybody that's familiar with the Canadian Army Trophy and Bill the Cat, yep, uh, that my tank was Delta 6-5. And uh, I, I, I'm so proud. But that's what that tank is in the, beginning of, in the beginning of the picture. I took that with an old Minolta. I think I'm pretty sure it was a Minolta 35 millimeter camera, very manual, you know, whatever. And I developed the film myself while I was stationed in Gelnhausen. Um, I learned how to, uh, they, they, you know, they, the military has uh, arts and crafts and just different types of things you can do off duty hours. Well, I learned how to develop film. So I took that photo, and that's my tank. There's no copyright infringement on it, and uh, but that's that's the origin of the picture, and that's the uh, my tank bumper numbers: three, four, eight, Third Armored Division, right, Fourth uh, Battalion, Eighth United States Cavalry, and then Delta Company six five, which is the XO's tank. So that was the headquarters platoon, executive officer's tank at the time, and that tank was named Desperado. Much to the crew's chagrin, we didn't like that too much because, uh, you know, when you're going down range and people are coming across the net singing Desperado, it was kind of embarrassing. But the commander had his choice and, uh, you know, they couldn't name it like Death Dealer or, or uh, you know, Death Something, something with death in it. it. Had to be Desperado. I digress. So... Why am I here? These are the other Tamiya kits that I picked up from my youth, and they are in one-tenth scale. All right? Are you ready for this? Are you ready for this nonsense? <laughs> That's it, man. The freaking grasshopper and the hornet. Now, there's no way... Some of you guys that are my age didn't attempt one of these kits. These are fun. Nuts and bolts and rubber tires and springs and gears. And when I mean, you had to build the gearbox and, you know, it was all ready to assemble. And then if you had enough money, which I worked my butt off, I got myself a set of servos and a Futaba radio. That was the basic version, but it was enough to get this thing going. And this vehicle hauls ass. Um, I put an R, what was it, an RS540 black motor or something like that. I can't remember what it was. Um, but it was always a big deal if you could enhance the motor, you know, change the wheels. We ended up, I ended up getting chrome rims for mine. And uh, I built it out of the box the way that you see it, okay? It was painted this way. Um, same thing with the Hornet. And, hey, I'm going to open these up so you can see what they look like on the inside because they're really cool. And I'm not going to build them right now because uh, I got too much fishiznit to do. Hang on a minute. <clears throat> Clicker. The grasshopper. And I hope I'm in the frame okay because my phone is upside down and I don't even know if it's running. So, uh, this is it. Ready to assemble model kit. Sealed gearbox with differential front wheel independent suspension. Rear wheel coil spring supported bathtub ABS resin frame, straight ribbed front racing tires, high performance off road rear tires, durable injection molded, highly detailed body includes powerful 380 type electric motor, requires a 7.2 volt running battery, not included. Tamiya, uh, what is that? Some X, I don't know what they're talking about here, X spec, whatever, blah blah blah. Two channel radio control system is recommended. Of course they want to sell you the uh, Tamiya version. 
So let's open this box and check out the inside. Okay, here's how the kit comes. This was, now for me when I got this model, I was all jazzed up and excited just like I was with the Tiger because it came in separate compartments. You know, that was a big deal. You know, that little cardboard, everything was compartmentalized and, and separated and bagged and all that business. And boy, that was cool to me, you know? So right off the, the bat, you can't help it but to grab the body, right, and the chassis. And here she is in all her glory. And really, when I did this model, all I did was paint the tubular frames with a with a silver color at the time. And I may have done some other, you know, small details, but I applied the uh, the, the stickers right to it. Um, because look, if you're not uh, comfortable riding these things around, you will run into stuff and cause some potential damage. But yeah, this is the chassis and, um, you know, this is what it looks like, but it's so cool. I need to build this up and just put it on the shelf. I don't even have to run it. <clears throat> All right. Here we have uh, some uh, suspension parts, and you've got the uh, what looks like the front swing arms here, steering knuckles, things like that. Wheels. Obviously, paint them any color you want. And, you know, like I said, back in those days, RC Hobbies carried replacement wheels for these things. And the ones that I got were more of a more of a solid rim that had a sort of a polished aluminum finish to it. And it really, really made the vehicle pop. It was cool looking. Here we have the driver in the bag, the front bumper, the side bumpers. More like running boards, but this was the front bumper. Very durable plastic has some bendiness to it and uh you'll be glad you have this on the front end because i guarantee you're gonna run into stuff <clears throat> battery box okay here's your side running boards or side uh guards those were also painted in a chrome finish now, i don't know if you could actually buy those in chrome just for as a spare part but that's the color i painted them all right here you got your driver And if anybody has a wild willy, and you know what I'm talking about, um, the driver's kind of similar. He's sort of a half... Well, actually, I think he may have a full body on the on the model kit. But, yeah, the head comes in, um, you know, two pieces. There's the body. Headlights right here. Good stuff. Humma, humma, humma. Check out the tires. I thought this was cool, man just to have these pneumatic looking tires on the front end and it just boom just took off man it was fast just looking at it all right here's your uh transmission axle rear axle stuff this, this is the housing for it you got to build that up okay and there's some gearing that needs to go in there and you got to do some lubricating yeah that's also made the kit fun because as a young builder, it kind of made you feel like a, a young mechanic. Okay, here's some of the gears, the internal nylon gears. Quite a few of them in there. Look at all the little nuts and bolts, okay? This is a parts bag A. Parts bag C, long... Uh, Thin screws and uh, like nylon, nylock nuts. Okay, parts bag D. These are like bushings and stuff. All right, here's your tie rod end, your little steering knuckles. Gotta have steering knuckles, right? Parts bag B. More self tapping screws um, for the build. A lot of hardware. A lot of hardware for this. Here's your bearings, okay, for your wheels and stuff. Or that may be partially in, in for the gearbox too, I don't remember. But uh, you could also upgrade these and get you some real wheel bearings that actually could do something. Here's some more gear stuff. 
your tie rod ends that snap onto those little balls I showed you, your springs for your suspension, some more gear work here, a tube of Tamiya grease, okay, because you got to have that grease. Here's the electric motor that comes with it. Very cool. And yep, these things rock and roll. What do we have here? All right. These are also part of the axle, the rear axle. It even gives you like a little tire iron tool, which is kind of, it's kind of fun. All right. And then some metal arms here for your servos that you're going to need to get your uh, servos to turn everything. Anyways, that's those, those are pretty much all the parts in the kit. And this was, this was your antenna. So your wire would have fed up through here and just kind of dangled off the, uh, off the vehicle but that was there to keep your whip antenna together and there's your decal sheet the grasshopper i don't know which way the camera's reading maybe it's this way uh, number 35 and these i believe are just peel and stick if memory serves okay safety precautions because you got to be safe Nobody wants to get hurt. Yeah, can you imagine being 13 years old, 14 years old, and you're doing real mechanical stuff? So here it tells you about the different options. You've got the, uh, the regular um, nylon bearings, or you can go with the sealed ball bearings for this vehicle. And... Those bearings do go inside the uh, gearbox that, that just confirmed that. So, um, more suspension stuff. Look at that. Get you a screwdriver, folks. Get you a radio system with some servos. Here, some basic wiring layout. Back in those days, man, it took you forever to charge a battery, and a guy couldn't afford to have more than the one that he has with it. So, it was fun. You get out there and tear up the road. That battery dies down, and they got to wait forever to charge the thing up. So, okay, more on the servo placement for the steering. Here you've got your speed controller and your receiver. Um, it just tells you how to put that stuff in. More suspension. Humma, humma, humma. How the rims go together. Some really nice drafting uh, cutaways uh, drawings here. And I'm not going to open up the Hornet because the Hornet is almost identical to this. Um, a couple of small minor changes with having an air spoiler and a little bit of different body design. But generally, uh, it goes together the same. Um, but it was the Hornet. So the Hornet is the Hornet. Very cool. You can see here where the antenna comes up through the chassis and through the window. All right, now let's drive your RC car. And here's some different things here to give you some ideas on how to do it. Parts listing on the back. In good to me a fashion. And here we have the, uh, the aftermarket service card. So yeah, if you needed parts, here's all the part number listings because if you bust something, you can uh, you can order the replacement parts. But you know, back in those days, we didn't have the internet, we didn't have Amazon, we didn't have eBay. We had freaking mail order, telephones that you had to actually dial, and uh, you know, that was it. So, this is cool, man. So this is just one of those deals that brings back a ton of memories for me. And uh, I tell you, I don't care what anybody says. I miss the late 70s and the 80s. We had good music. We had good toys. Um, Star Wars came out in the late 70s. Um, and there were lots of cool models and things that came out of that. In fact, I, uh, I've been collecting the D'Agostini parts for the Millennium Falcon. Different video, different day. So, um, yeah, you can still get these. They are out there. And show of hands, tell me in the chat, who owned a grasshopper? 
I did, Wolfie. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching. I love you guys. All right, check me out on Watson's Wagons and uh, give me a shout out. I'll get you some pictures of the parts and put them in the video. All right, get out there and build something. Buy some parts, buy some tanks, buy some airplanes, 140, whatever it is you like, do it. Get motivated, get off your butt. All right, just get off your butt and and take care of your business. You can ask for forgiveness later, all right? Forgiveness is much easier than getting permission from the wife, trust me. So uh, uh, go do your thing, all right? Love you guys. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Watson's models. I'm out of here!